let's really now examine if Aisha was really six when the Prophet said the marriage contract and she was really nine when the Prophet consummated the marriage and moved with her. We will mention a number of points that demonstrate Aisha was not nine when the Prophet moved in with her when he married her. Number one, Ibn Ishaq, he lists Aisha as one of the early Muslims to embrace Islam. Remember, we talked about that before. And he specifically states she was the 18th or 19th person to be the Muslim, to be a Muslim. So the 18th or 19th Muslim in early Islam was Aisha. Okay, when did that happen? Those first 20 or 30 Muslims, when did they join Islam? In the very early days of Islam, right? So some narrations tell us in that first year. Maximum in those first three years, you had about 20 or 30 or 40 Muslims. But according to Sunni historians, they believe in that first, they believe in that first year, you already had these 20. So Aisha, according to what Ibn Ishaq narrates, she became Muslim in that first year after revelation. Okay, how old was she when she became a Muslim? When they say somebody became a Muslim, you can't be an infant to become a Muslim, right? You can't be one, two, three, four. Let's say, let's say she was at least six for her to be called a Muslim who understands what Islam is and for her to say the Shahadatain, right? They have a problem with the Imam on the same end when they say he was a child. No? Yeah, the Imam who was 10, who was nine or 10, they have a problem with it. Let's just assume Aisha was six, fine. Let's just say she was six when she supposedly became Muslim. Okay, so if we consider her to be six in that year, then if you go 10 years later, year 12 or 13, when the Prophet made the Aqid on Aisha, right, in Mecca, that makes her at least 16 or 17. And if you add three years to that, when the Prophet moved with Aisha in Medina, that makes her at least 19 or 20. So if we take Ibn Ishaq's narration that Aisha was the 18th or 19th Muslim, she must have been, must have been at least 15 or 16 when the Prophet did Aqid on her. She must have been, if we take his narration. So that's one point, one clue that Aisha was not that young. She was definitely not six or nine. That's number one. Number two, many historians such as Tariq Dimashq by Ibn Asakir, Majma al Zawaid Lil Haythami, Al Mu'jam al Kabir, these are Sunni historians. They have mentioned, they have asserted that Aisha had an older sister by the name of who? Asma. Asma was born before the Hijra by 27 years, before the Hijra of the Prophet. So, how many years before the Ba'tha of the Prophet? Subtract 13. That leaves you with what? 27 minus 13 is 14. So she was born 14 years before Islam, before the Prophet received revelation. And these, and these um, historians have clarified very clearly and they've asserted that Asma was how many years older than Aisha? She was 10 years older than Aisha, right? So if Asma was born 27 years before Hijrah and she's 10 years older than her younger sister Aisha, what year was Aisha born? Year 17 before the Hijrah. That means when the Prophet received revelation, how old was Aisha? Four, right? Because 17 years before Hijrah, that's four years before he received revelation because he received revelation 13 years before the Hijrah. He stayed 13 years in Mecca. So Aisha was four years old when the Prophet received Wahi. Now when did he do, do the Aqid on her? At least 11, 12 years after receiving revelation in year 11 or 12 of Ba'tha. So we're talking about two years before the Hijrah. That makes her how many years? At least 15 or 16. See, this is clear proof because there is no dispute regarding Asma, Asma's birth date. Asma, her oldest sister, we know, according to all these historians, she was born 27 years before Hijrah. 
And all these historians, you know, clearly state that Asma was 10 years older than Aisha, that makes Aisha four years at the time of revelation. Which means it would, it would have been impossible for her to have been six when the Prophet did the Aqid or nine when he moved with her. Impossible. It's just incompatible. Mathematically, it's not compatible. Yes. Probably, exactly, I'll mention that. Probably barring, obviously, some of the younger brother, when he was in the body of Abu Talib. All the rest of them, they were born between... Exactly, the that's another proof. Another proof um, that we can use is exactly the one that you mentioned, which, let me see, which historian um, stated that? Tabari, Tabari, the famous Sunni historian, right? And he is very respected. He asserts with certainty, not like speculation or his own analysis. He asserts with certainty that all of Abu Bakr's children were be born in Jahiliyyah before the religion of Islam. That includes Aisha. So she must have been born before the Prophet received Wahi, which makes her at least how many years old? 12 years after Wahi? At least 12, 13. At least. If we assume she was born a few days before Wahi in Jahiliyyah, that makes her at least 12 when the Prophet did the marriage contract and add three years to that when he moved with her, at least 50. See, none of these numbers are adding up to make nine or six, impossible. So yes, that is actually another proof. Another proof regarding um, her sister Asma, historical references assert that Asma died which year? 73 after the Hijrah, so how long did she live? 27 years before Hijrah, she was born. 73 years after Hijrah, she died. How old does that make her? 100. Asma really lived a long life. She lived actually 100 years, which means that you know she was born. This confirms when historians tell us year 73, when Asma died, she was 100. This confirms that she was born 70, 27 years before the Hijrah, and she was 10 years older than Aisha, which confirms Aisha's age could not have been six or nine at the time of the marriage uh, to the Prophet Another proof, and this was interesting, at tahawi a famous Sunni scholar, there is an alleged hadith that the Prophet said, it's a funny hadith, he is trying to justify it, but in justifying it, he indirectly negates the you know claim that she was six or nine when she when she got married there is a hadith he's trying to justify that hadith what does the hadith state there's an alleged hadith that the prophet sallallahu supposedly said that only these women achieved completion maryam ibn imran and asiya imra'at fir'aun so asiya and maryam they achieved completion from women and then the Prophet supposedly said, And he says, the virtue of Aisha with respect to all other women is like the virtue of Tharid over other foods. Tharid in Arabic was a type of dish or bowl in which you have some bread, some meat, and some meat water. I don't know what do you call it in English, a type of meat porridge. Can we say meat porridge? What's a porridge? Stew, stew meat stew. In Arabic we call it my laham, right? Have you seen some people, you know, actually eat that, right? So it's not like a soup soup, it's, it's like a soup, uh, it's like a broth with, with meat in it. Now yeah, the Arabs like this food. Uh, the Prophet supposedly in this hadith, he says, my, Aisha, my, my wife Aisha, her status over other women is like the status of this meat porridge over other foods. First of all, come on, just look at the phrasing of this hadith. Which man would say that comparing his wife to some food that people eat? That's not respectful. Even, you know, if, if, if she was, even for, if for the sake of argument, she was his most beloved wife. That's not how you say it. That's, that's a Bedouin who doesn't know anything would say something like that about his prophet. Not someone like a prophet who's polite, who's cultured, who's uh, in intelligent. You don't say something like that. 
And besides, some are, from some scholars have argued, okay, you know, the Arabs had many, many types of foods. Who, who even says this was the t- best type of food for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make that, uh, you know, uh, to even make that, um, you know, claim about Aisha. By the way, interestingly, Sunni sources narrate that once the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the same tharid, the same food on a tray in Medina uh, with one of his wives. And Aisha, she gets so jealous, she gets up, she takes the tray and she smashes it on the ground. And then in her defense, you know what they say? I swear, I've seen their comments. Haram, she loved the Prophet so much. She was so jealous out of love, she couldn't hold her emotions back. And she would do something like that in the presence of the Prophet. Do you really have respect for the Messenger of God when you do stuff like that? There's people in the room, guests, you take the tray and you smash it like that? You smash it like that in front of the Prophet? Anyways, so Tahawi now, why is he trying to justify this hadith? Because we have Sahih hadiths that state Fatima alayhi salam is the leader of all women and the Prophet favored her over other women. And those Sahih hadiths contradict this hadith that Aisha is the best of all women. And she has a great status over all other women, right? So he's trying to resolve that contradiction. What does he say? Listen to this carefully. His justification is maybe the Prophet said this before Fatima became mature. When she was a little girl and Aisha was, you know, mature. So he said that. At that time, Aisha was the best. Then when Fatima matured and, you know, she reached puberty and she became a woman, then the Prophet said Fatima is the best of all women. That's his justification in accepting this hadith. But what do you realize in making that justification, what pit did he fall into? Exactly. See, Tahawi, he himself, he believes Fatima was 25 years old when she passed away, which makes her um, at the time of Wahi two years old. So she was born two years before Wahi according to his analysis. Okay, let's say fine. Let's say Fatima was born two years before Revelation, before Islam. If Fatima when she was a child, Aisha was already a grown up mature woman, at least nine, right? Because in in Arab culture, you're a woman when you're nine. If when Fatima is young and she was only two at the time of Wahi, so when Fatima was three, four, five, six, Aisha was what? A mature woman. How old does that make her year 12 of the Ba'tha when Fatima now was 14 years old? How old does that make Aisha? Right? When the Prophet supposedly said this, Aisha must have been at least 9, 10, 11. At least because she was now a grown up woman. Which means Aisha when the Prophet did the Aqid on her must have been more than 9, 10, 11. A few years more than 9, 10, 11. And we can use that testimony from him to prove that she was not that young. So that's another piece of evidence we could use. Another piece of evidence, Ibn Qutaybah states that Aisha died year 58 after the Hijrah. So that's three years before Karbala. And he said she neared 70 years old when she died. How old does that make Aisha? If she's almost 70, year 58 of the Hijrah, when was she born? According to his analysis and testimony. She was born 12 years before the Hijrah, right? Because put 12 and 58, you get 70. She was born 12 years before the Hijrah, which means that first year of Wahi, of Revelation, right? So if Aisha was one year old, one one years old, when the Prophet received Wahi, if you go 12 years later when he supposedly did the contract, how old does that make her? At least 12, 13 when he did the contract, the marriage contract. And that makes her at least 15, 16 when he married her, meaning he consummated the marriage. So that's another proof that Aisha could not have been six and nine. Another hadith that we can use, Bukhari narrates that the Prophet said, a girl cannot be married off, cannot be married off, until she gives her permission, her full consent. So they asked him, how does she give permission? He said, if she stays stays silent 
and doesn't say no, then that's her, you know, respectful way of saying that she consents to the marriage. Okay, supposedly the Prophet made the contract when Aisha was how, how many years old? Six. How do you get the consent of a six-year-old child, really? The Prophet says you can't marry until you get the consent of the girl. Come on, she's six. What type of consent is she going to give? What, what does she know about marriage? That's number one. Number two, I'll share with you the hadiths that when the Prophet came for the marriage proposal, nobody even asked Aisha. So where is her consent? That's an even invalid marriage according to Sunni sources. And I'm sure they don't want to accept that. Another hadith, Bukhari narrates that Aisha said, when I first started to comprehend, how old do you have to be when you can first start to comprehend and can distinguish events and things going on in society? How old? Well, no, no, I mean, you, we can assume a, a, a young child can have an idea of some events going on. Let's say at least five, right? Definitely not two, three, four. When you're two, three, four, do you know what's the fitness going on in society? Somebody has a religion, Quraysh, what they're planning? You don't, you can't comprehend that. So when Aisha says, when I first started to understand and comprehend matters, she must have been at least five. Then she says, so she says, when I first started to comprehend, I saw my parents as Muslims. My father, Abu Bakr, and her mother, Umm Ruman, they were Muslims. And this was during the hijrah of Muslims to Habasha. Historically, when did the Muslims start their migration to Habasha? What year? Five or six. The lowest estimate is five. The, least is, the last is six. Let's say five. For the sake of argument, let's take the lower number. So if Aisha is at least five, when Muslims went to Habasha, right? So how old was Aisha when the Muslims went to Habasha? At least five. Add seven years to that when the Prophet supposedly in year 11 or 12 did the aqid on her. She must have been at least how many years when the Prophet did the marriage contract? At least 11 or 12. And when he married her, add three years to that. So this is also one piece of evidence that demonstrates she was not that young.